Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Wii Chip W2 Air Mouse. If you're in the market for a new remote for your Android box or computer, this might be an option for you. Before we get into the unboxing and testing, let's go into some of the features of this remote. Not only is it a remote, but it also serves as a mouse. And if you flip it over, it has a keyboard and a touchpad. And it looks to solve one of the biggest issues people have with losing remotes. By a press of a button, you'll be able to do a seek function, which should give you an alert to find it. You won't have to worry about batteries as it has a lithium battery inside to recharge it. You can use it to learn and control other infrared devices. It has a built-in microphone that you can use by pressing a button. And lastly, it has an operating distance of 10 meters, which is about 30 feet. Let's open it up. Here we have the USB dongle that you'll plug in the back of your receiver or your Android box. Here we have the seek button. So if you do end up losing a remote, all you need to do is just press that button there and it'll send a, an alert to your remote. Here we have the micro USB charging cable. And next we have our remote. It's a fairly large remote, but look how beautiful that is. It's got nice big buttons, so you're not gonna be squishing your buttons here when you're typing. Over here, it's got that nice carbon look. Got our volume buttons, the up and down. We have our menu button, our mic button, power button. This will be the control for our air mouse, and we have the back button. Now I do see it doesn't have a home button, so I'm hoping maybe we could program that um, in order to get that functionality when we're using it on our Android box. But we'll take a look and we'll go and deep dive into it. It is fairly light. And if we go over here, I don't know if we can see that there because of the shiny finish. It does have an on and off toggle here. So if you wanna conserve battery, just have to flip it on and off. We have the micro USB charging port. And I think that's it for the surrounding. I'm gonna plug this into my Android box and we're gonna test it out and see how well it works. To start, I'm gonna plug in the dongle and then we're gonna start our very first test, which is using the seek option to find the remote. Okay, now that it's plugged in, I'm gonna hit the seek function. And there we go, it's pretty loud. Now to simulate this getting stuck inside a couch cushion, I'm gonna pull out a pillow, I'm gonna cover it, and we're gonna see how loud it remains being covered. Obviously environmental factors may vary, but it is pretty loud. Now to stop it, just press any button on the remote. I'll just hit the back button. And that's it for the find feature. Now let's head over to the Nvidia Shield. Now that the NVIDIA Shield's booted up, let's take a look at the directional controls. We'll click into something. Perfect. Next, let's see if the power button works. The power button doesn't seem to work with the Android TV. Next, let's head over to the Air Mouse. Works just fine. I'll go over and select something and it opens up. I'll hit the back button. First, I need to actually disengage the air mouse. We'll press it again. Next, we'll test the mic and it engages that Google Assistant, which you can see is typing everything I'm saying at the bottom. We'll hit the back button. And obviously I don't need to go through that. Here we have the menu control. So when we press that, it brings up our settings. Next we have our volume buttons. Up, down. Now the only issue I'm finding here is not having that home button here, especially when you're on Android TV. Because when you're in an app, it could come in handy to just do a one press to get out of it as well as double pressing it normally brings up a bunch of recent items that you can go into once again, or even close them out. Now let's go over to the top and let's test out the physical keyboard. So I'll just flip it over. 
and that works just fine. Next, using the trackpad, let's go down to the on-screen keyboard. And we can't select anything here. Let me flip over. I'm going to turn on the air mouse. So it looks like the air mouse doesn't work with the Android keyboard. Personally, I don't like selecting characters this way, so it doesn't really bother me. So that's not anything concerning to me. As long as I have my physical keyboard and the ability to go down and manually type in characters, I'm happy. One of the things I want to mention is if you have an app like Button Remapper Pro, you can reprogram the buttons on your controller. It comes at the cost, it's about $5, I think, on the Google Play Store, but you can change the location of buttons. In this case, I have this menu button here. I could change this into a home button to have all the functionality that I would normally have with any other controller. The other option is you can have this remote learn some infrared commands. In my case, I have a Sony XBR um, Android TV. And if I wanted, I could have this controller learn the infrared command off of this one here. And all that I would need to do is put them face to face. On the Wii Trip controller, hold down the power button as well as the OK button. Once the light starts flashing, I could then go to the spot on the remote that I want to program. So in this case, it would be this menu button. I'd click here. I would then head over to my other remote. And in this case, I would want to program this home button over to this menu button. Holding down the home button will then program it onto the Wii trip. Now, I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them down below. Now, the next part I want to test is I want to go into some of the most popular apps that most people have. I want to see how the remote functions inside each app. We're going to start off in Netflix. I'm going to select the air mouse to see if I can click on anything. And it doesn't allow us to select. So I'll turn off the air mouse. I'll go do a search now. And in the search box here, I'll turn on the air mouse again. And we're still unable to select anything. Turning off the air mouse. I'm going to flip over to the physical keyboard and see if we can type anything. And it looks like we could utilize the physical keyboard to type out our titles. So for the Netflix app, it looks like we're going to be able to utilize our OK button as well as our directional pad and our physical keyboard. The air mouse will unfortunately not function within Netflix. Now in Prime Video, I'll click the air mouse and it looks like we're unable to select anything. So I'll just turn off the air mouse. I'll go up to our search. And I'll turn on the air mouse again, see if we could type anything in. Looks like we're unable to select anything here. I'll turn off the air mouse once again, and I'm gonna go over to the physical keyboard. And it looks like the physical keyboard doesn't work either. So for Prime Video, it looks like we're gonna only be able to utilize our OK button, as well as our directional buttons here. Now in Disney Plus, turn on the air mouse. Just went to Pixar using the air mouse, went through just fine. I'm gonna turn it off again. I'm gonna go into our search categories. Turn on the air mouse again, see if we could type. And it looks like we can type using the air mouse. Next, I'm gonna see if the voice search works. Mighty Ducks. So the voice search works as well, so that's great. Now for the last part of the test, I'm gonna turn over for the physical keyboard and see if that works. And that works fine as well. So it looks like we have full functionality inside Disney Plus. So we have microphone, air mouse, and keyboard support. Now in Plex, turning on the air mouse, I'll just click on this one here. And it looks like the air mouse is functional. I'm gonna go up to the top. Testing one, two, three. And the microphone works within Plex as well. I'll just turn off the air mouse, hit back. Go back up here again. I'm gonna go over. 
And now I'm gonna turn on the air mouse again and try it on the keyboard. So it looks like we can't use the air mouse to type. So I'll turn off the air mouse and now I'll go over to the physical keyboard. And the physical keyboard works just fine. So as another quick rundown, the directional works. The air mouse works to click on tiles and icons, but you can't use it on the keyboard. And the physical keyboard works fine as well. So for our last app, we're gonna test out YouTube. Hit the air mouse. And it seems to load just fine. We'll go over here and we'll do a search. Turn on the air mouse again, see if we can use the air mouse for the keyboard. And it looks like the air mouse works on the keyboard. I'll flip over to the physical keyboard and that works as well. And now for our last test, I will see if the microphone works. Test. So it looks like all the features run just fine in the YouTube app. So we could utilize the directional pad, the OK button. We could utilize the microphone, the air mouse, and the physical keyboard. Between the functionality and the looks of the Wii Chip W2, it's great if you're in the market for a new remote. One thing I would have liked to see is a home button instead of the menu button. As I mentioned earlier, you can tweak this by using infrared learning, as well as if you have an Android device, Button Mapper Pro. If you're interested in seeing a video about the Button Mapper Pro, just let me know in the comments. Even though I focused this video on the Android TV experience, I did test it on Windows 10 and the mouse and keyboard functioned without issue. And I was able to get the remote working on my Sony Android TV. If you have any questions, drop them down below. And while you're there, hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one.